Hey everyone, hello from MOTH. Thank you for joining me today and thank you for all the likes and uh, comments on the last video. I know the quality was not great and I'm trying to improve my recording and voiceover as I work through this channel. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to have a few disclaimers so that we are all at the same level. So the first thing that I wanted to say is that I can only speak about my experience as a type 2 diabetic. I am more or less ignorant when it comes to type 1 diabetes. I am not a doctor or a medical practitioner. So please do consult a doctor if you want to adopt a similar lifestyle or follow some of the suggestions that I might have based on my experience. I am documenting my personal experience. So while it should work for most of the people because I'm just a normal person with normal genetics, always consult a doctor before making any changes in your food or lifestyle. While a low carb diet seems to be effective for me, please understand everyone is different. Your hormonal balance is different. Your body structure is different. So what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. It seems to be working for me and I just wanted to highlight based on what I've seen last week, a strict low carb is not essential uh, and I'll show the data for that to sort of support what I mean. Never, 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 please never stop or change your medication without consulting a doctor first. Your primary goal should be getting your parameters under control and everything else is secondary. And finally, this channel is not focused on weight loss, but long term weight management is definitely one of the goal because the better you manage your weight, the better your blood sugar control and better you can deal with diabetes over the long term. So now let's get into the main topic that I wanted to talk about today, which is metrics for last week. So last week, if you remember or if you've seen my video, I mentioned that I wanted to try starting a low carb diet with less than say 100 grams of carbs every day. Now while I couldn't live up to that, uh, essentially because I thought it will be good to get a baseline of what I am really eating right now uh, for one or two weeks and just to see like you know what is my blood sugar response according to the foods that I am eating. And that doesn't mean that I was eating whatever I wanted to eat. Like if I felt like eating a bag of chips, I refrain from doing that. But uh, essentially mindful eating where I decided that, okay, I'm trying to eat good food, which is not processed. And I can tell you right now that I failed once where I ate a, a burger from McDonald's and followed it up with uh, some uh, frozen food uh, that uh, was lying around. Anyway, but in general, I managed to stay away from processed foods and I managed to uh, eat relatively healthy. Okay, so now let's talk about this last week's diet and I'll talk essentially about what I've been doing the last six days because I recorded the last video on 30th of September and when I started this my weight was 69.2 kilograms while there was some variation depending on the amount of water I drank and maybe like a day I had constipation, which is a reality. Uh, you might see a fluctuation in weight depending on these factors also. So, essentially, end of the week, the weight has been relatively constant. Before we talk about blood sugars, just want to highlight that my blood pressure has been pretty much under control. Uh, no issues of uh, low blood pressure or high blood pressure. Fasting blood sugars were essentially good except for certain times when I eat rice or sort of like, you know, lost my uh, willpower and couldn't hold back when it came to a burger or eating some frozen food. And that's what essentially happened on 3rd of October. As you can see here, on 3rd of October, uh, I had a pre-dinner blood sugar of 80 milligrams per deciliter, which is considered normal. And I had a burger. And I sort of uh, ate so much that I ended up throwing up. And my post blood 
post dinner blood sugar was only 63 so i sort of was worried and ended up eating a frozen pancake uh, it's a chinese pancake and that sort of uh, messed up the amount of carbs i ate on that day and the effect of that uh, chinese pancake and the burger was that the next day when i got up my blood sugar was relatively high a uh, pretty high in fact it's 152 Uh, 42 points above the normal level, but uh, I get managed to get it under control by eating normal, you know, my medication and uh, not eating my breakfast. And as you can see, uh, my blood sugars has been pretty okay. And wherever you see this little spikes, for example, on 4th of October post dinner, my blood sugar was 129, a little bit above. what is considered normal and that's essentially because i had like about 150 grams of rice with my dinner and that sort of uh, affected my blood sugars a little bit and same was the case on 5th of october also where i had a big plate of rice uh, big by japanese standards it's about uh, 240 grams of rice cooked rice of course and that was that sort of uh, affected my blood sugars a little bit but otherwise in most of the cases my blood sugar was okay i've been trying to get like you know at least 20 to 30 minutes of exercise to get to that uh, total of 150 minutes a week but uh, yeah i mean uh, it's pretty much i think like 30 minutes 30 to 35 minutes is a good sweet spot for me because i don't have to like stress out too much or worry about it i can take a 10 minute walk here and there and sort of work out and as i mentioned before while well, i started this week with the thought that you know i'm going to have a low carb diet with less than 100 grams of carbs over the whole day i really did not stick to it essentially because i wanted to get a baseline because i wanted to understand what are the things that i eat normally uh, and sort of understand you know what all changes i needed to make So I pretty much ate what I felt like eating, except for like processed foods, uh, and like I said, one day I sort of slipped and yeah. And as you can see, I've been eating much more than my target calories, which I initially thought would be around eight hundred, one thousand eight hundred calories, or to two thousand calories. But uh, I've been eating way more than that, but uh, somehow managed to keep my weight constant. Now one thing that I really wanted to see is if I continue this for another week or two weeks would this affect my weight and blood sugars so I'll update you next week after following a similar diet but try and make sure that you know I don't eat so much that I'm nauseated and I throw up and that's what basically this red highlights show these are the days that I ate so much that I ended up throwing up my dinner or lunch or whatever right so the calorie measurement on those days might not be accurate but the other days i'm fairly confident it is within plus or minus 5% accurate and it has been okay for me given the fact that i was eating normal amount of carbs but one thing i ensured is that i'm not eating any uh, refined foods or refined processed fo- foods or snacks Okay, let's uh, take a moment to look at the split of uh, uh, my macronutrients, right? So essentially, you might be aware that the three major macro macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And we'll talk about uh, uh, micronutrients in a later episode down the line because these are also important. But in my opinion, it is important to fix your macronutrients first because before focusing too much on micronutrients unless and until you have some known deficiencies okay so having said all that if you look at my macronutrients split i've been eating a good amount of fats right on a daily basis and the fats are the are the little measurements that you can see in the blue right so almost every day i'm exceeding 1500 calories in coming from fats right uh, don't Sorry about this this particular day, which is today's uh, uh, measurement. I still need to uh, have my dinner and you know finalize my calorie intake for the day. 
But more or less, as you can see, I've been eating a relatively uh, fat-rich diet. But one thing to note is that none of the fats that I'm eating are coming from any sort of uh, junk food or processed food, except on 3rd of uh, October, where I ended up eating a big hamburger from uh, McDonald's and had fries, a large fries, and uh, concluded the day with uh, uh, around two Taiwanese pancakes, which all which are like, you know, processed food and super processed food. And, and that's the day like I have the highest amount of carbs that, uh, that I've eaten, right? So essentially like, yes, I'm going to eat like this again for a week or two and see what works best for me, right? And then try and adjust the amount of carbs, protein and uh, fats to a reasonable level of say 2000 to 2200 calories. Okay, now let's take a look at the split by percentage of the macronutrients. And again, the same color, blue is whatever the fat I am eating at this point of time. Whatever is red is proteins and yellow is my carb intake, right? So essentially my carb intake has been between uh, around 30 to 35 percent on most of the days except on 3rd of October where yeah it's a bad day. I mean I got this craving, I had a burger, I had a fries and that sort of messed up everything for that day, right? Again, uh, yeah this is something I need to keep working to ensure that you know whenever I get a craving I need to find some other alternative which can help to uh, keep my mind away from this craving. And yeah, I mean, I've been eating everything that I wanted to eat except, uh, you know, processed foods like chips or uh, uh, cookies or whatever. Uh, anyway, I've not eaten cookies for a long time. Uh, I've gotten used to eating sugar-free stuff for a very long time now. And uh, yeah, before I forget, yeah. So one other thing I wanted to highlight is that my fasting window has been pretty long, right? It's been uh, at least 15 hours and some days it went up to like 17 hours. I think this is because I've been doing intermittent fasting for a very long time and it sort of became easy for me to fall into this routine of extending my fast by an hour or so. I used to think that I'm only doing fasting for 14 hours because that's what uh, I thought I was doing. But when I actually started tracking the time, I found out that it's easy for me to do uh, 15 to 16 hours of fasting without any issues and it's easy for me because I've been doing intermittent fasting for at least two years now if not three years where I skip breakfast and focus on getting uh, eating my food within a specific amount of window. Before we conclude this video I just want to let everyone know I'm conscious of the fact that there are people with food restrictions and I'm respected, respectful about those restrictions and I would try to emulate that sort of diet in one of my diet uh, upcoming diets for a couple of weeks to see how effective uh, blood sugar management is when it comes to say vegetarian diet or a kosher diet or a halal diet or a diet that a typical Indian can follow given the fact that I'm an Indian. For example, in most of the Indians don't eat uh, meats other than chicken or mutton or fish. So I would want to try a diet where I don't eat any meat that cannot be eaten by my fellow Indians, right? But let me be very clear. I have no personal food restrictions other than the fact that I'm allergic to seafood. So this is something I cannot eat. I pretty much eat everything under the sun and I'm okay with that. And I don't think my personal choice affects anyone else. So that's that. Having said all this, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week and give you an update on my metrics, right? So thank you for watching. See you next week. Bye.